What should we talk about today? Huh, maybe I can find something here. Alright, let's see. Nearest red giants within 20 light years of Earth. Hmm, nothing. How about nearest wolf riot stars? Huh, also nothing. Neutron stars? Nothing. Black holes? Also nothing? What about... Oh, I know, white dwarfs. Okay, there are a few, but that's not something I wanted to talk about. How about Planemos, also known as rogue planets? Yeah, there seem to be quite a lot. Hello, wonderful person. Today we're going to be talking about rogue planets, also known as sub-brown dwarfs, that seem to be pretty much everywhere in the galaxy. As a matter of fact, there might be more of rogue planets around us than there are actual stars. But we just can't really see them, and we haven't found that many of them. But today we're going to talk about research that suggests we're going to be able to discover at least a few hundreds in the next few years. Here's what a typical sub-brown dwarf or a rogue planet might look like. You really have trouble seeing it because, well, there's nothing here to illuminate it. It produces very, very little light, and the only practical way for us to see them is to maybe look at them in infrared light. So there was actually one survey a few years ago, known as WISE survey, that did discover a few of these beautiful objects in infrared. And it just so happens that one of the closest objects to our solar system, essentially one of the closest star-like objects, is indeed a rogue planet that you can see moving right here across the night skies with the name WISE 0855-0714, discovered by the prolific astronomer Kevin Lillman back in 2014, I believe. So this planet is definitely exciting, it's something interesting, something unusual, but we haven't really discovered that many of these rogue planets in the last few years. Mostly, as you can imagine, because they are relatively small, they produce practically no light, and at the same time, even today we don't really have a very efficient way of detecting any of these objects. But luckily for us, there is one telescope that NASA is currently working on that almost lost its funding because the White House uh, almost cancelled this project back in 2018-2019, but has been actually continued through perseverance by the NASA administration. This telescope used to be known as WFIRST, but has been renamed into Nancy Grace Roman Telescope, named after the wonderful Nancy Grace Roman, who is known as the mother of Hubble, responsible for essentially designing and creating the Hubble telescope, who also unfortunately passed away a couple of years ago. And upon completion and launch in a few years from now, the telescope will be able to very accurately detect a lot of different objects around the galaxy. Mostly because it's going to be actually looking right in the middle of our own galaxy and looking at all sorts of stars and their interaction with various massive objects. And so the scientists behind this paper, you can also find in the description below, made a prediction about how many possible rogue planets this telescope will be able to discover in the next few years. And although the modern list is relatively short, there's only a few dozen planets so far, they expect that the telescope will be able to discover several hundred planets of various sizes and masses and also various distances from planet Earth by detecting a very specific signal which they think this telescope will be able to detect very well. Specifically here, we're talking about the very well-known technique known as gravitational lensing. In this case, when one of these planets passes in front of a distant star somewhere else in the galaxy, it's going to produce a very specific kind of a gravitational lensing effect with a very specific dip, which may last anywhere from a few hours to possibly even a few days, depending on how massive the object is and also depending on how far away the star is. In other words, all this telescope needs to do is just look at these billions and billions of stars out there and try to see a sudden and very specific change in the light observed from some of these stars. All of this can be done automatically using modern techniques, but the thing is, we need more sensitivity than the current telescopes allow. And this telescope will have the necessary sensitivity for us to see any object up to about 24,000 light years away from us, assuming of course two things. First, that it passes in front of the star, and second of all, that our estimates for the number of these planets in the galaxy is currently correct. Now right now the scientists think that there are more of these objects than actual stars. The current estimate for the number of stars in the Milky Way galaxy, for example, stands at maybe around 200 to 400 billion stars somewhere in here most of which are present in the center of the galaxy. 
but the estimate for the rogue planets, also known as sub-brown dwarfs, is closer to about a trillion at least, which means that there should be more of these objects than stars, and this telescope will allow us to investigate this assumption. Because with approximately 1 trillion of these planets in the galaxy and with approximately 200 to 40 billion different stars, over the next few years we should be detecting a few hundred such gravitational lensing effects, which will obviously confirm the hypothesis. But at the same time, chances are we're probably wrong in one of the assumptions. Because in reality, since we can't see how many rogue planets there are, there could be a lot more of them and we could end up seeing thousands and thousands of these gravitational lensing effects. And by the way, each of these objects will only produce a single gravitational lensing effect every few million years. So we don't expect the same planet to be seen twice, for example. But before we go on, I know how difficult it is to imagine numbers. I mean, I used to teach math, so it's something that always became difficult for many students. And in this case, I know how difficult it is to visualize the idea of billion. So I'm going to guide you to this simulation, created by wonderful Matt Karostov, who made a website that you can also find in the description below, that helps you visualize billions in terms of wealth. In this case, it actually shows you how much money Jeff Bezos actually has. And it will take you a few minutes to finish this, but it's basically a really, really, really big number. And in this particular simulation, it really helps you understand and helps you appreciate how big of a number this actually is. So if you have some time to spare, the link for this is in the description below. But now imagine that number times around 10. So that's the number of rogue planets we think there should be in the galaxy. Chances are we're wrong and there could be a lot more simply because we don't truly understand how they're made. If they're predominantly made when various planets leave star systems by being kicked out, or when, instead of forming a star, a much smaller brown dwarf or a sub-brown dwarf is born, and if these are the only ways for rogue planets to be generated, then our assumption of about a trillion of these objects might be correct. But if the telescope starts discovering more of them, and most importantly, a lot of them just don't make sense, then we are going to have to reassess our theories and try to come up with a new explanation for why we're seeing so many of these rogue planets everywhere. So in other words, this particular telescope is probably going to redefine our understanding of both planets, how they're made, and how many of them are there are in the actual galaxy. And since the discovery of the closest rogue planet to us around 7 light years away from planet Earth was a complete surprise, the chances for more surprises in the next 10 years are actually pretty high. Because due to how sensitive the telescope is, we're going to be able to see even smaller objects, only mass of planet Mars, compared to previous detections which were actually a very very massive rogue planet's mass of Jupiter. So here the sensitivity is going to increase quite dramatically and we might discover even Earth-like planets, or at least Earth-mass planets, which do have a very high potential for creating incredible conditions maybe even for extraterrestrial life. There are several theories that suggest that these rogue planets, because they weren't really interacting with any stars nearby, might have absolutely pristine conditions for all sorts of hydrothermal vents, liquid oceans, and various other sources for potential extraterrestrial life to survive in. For example, it's been suggested that a typical rogue planet with enough hydrogen and helium on the surface might possess very high atmospheric pressure which will actually allow for liquid oceans to easily exist on the surface. And that's without any kind of a star illumination and without any kind of an effect from the solar radiation with heat being produced entirely by the planet itself. And if such an object has a massive moon, it might even get more heat from various tidal effects from the moon itself. So in this case there are quite a lot of different ideas suggested by scientists that present these rogue planets as very interesting, very unique, and very unusual places to look for extraterrestrial life. Although, once again, we're still kind of having trouble finding them. They are practically invisible and only produce very little amount of infrared light. Other than gravitational lensing effect, we're not going to be able to see them anytime soon, and even with very sensitive infrared telescopes, we're only going to be able to find some of the nearby ones, nothing farther than, for example, 50 light years away from us. And so it's going to take a few decades before we can definitively say what's on these objects and what they're all about. But until we discover more about rogue planets, and most importantly, until the telescope itself becomes operational, that's kind of all I wanted to mention about this particular study. 
Once we discover another unusual rogue planet, or learn something unusual about them, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can also find in the description below. And maybe just come back tomorrow and watch another video to learn something new. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.